having an attorney to guide you through that process is not super expensive and, and, and it'll, uh, it'll alleviate a lot of headaches later. Closing your business can be one of the hardest things you'll ever do. And with so many decisions to make, it can help to have a bankruptcy attorney explain your options. That's why we're talking to attorney David Schuster on today's episode of Ask the Lawyer. David, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. Well, as a bankruptcy attorney, I know you've seen situations where people decide it's in their best interest to close down their business. Talk about your experience with those situations. Well, yes, uh, it's it's often that I talk to clients who are still operating the business, and um, it, it, usually it's there's a large business loan involved, um, and there is uh, often the inability to pay the monthly rent. Okay, um, if, if there is rent, and and so you know the. People are just looking for answers of what to do. It could be that there's still income coming in the business. And, and, and so really, I'll, I'll tell you in this uh, conversation, the overriding theme is going to be, you know, talk to an attorney, talk to an attorney, especially a debt relief attorney if the business has debt, uh, because the initial consultation is, is, is going to be likely going to be free uh, in most cases, uh, a free 30 minute consultation. And so much can be learned in that con in that consultation. And, and so it just every situation is different. But, you know, talking to attorney early in the process at any time that the business owner knows that there's just too much debt to pay off and keep going. Right. And let's talk about the process of actually shutting down a small business. I imagine, obviously, there's more to it than just having the owner walk away. Yes. Yeah. I mean, every, first of all, of course, every business is different. You know, this many things, different situations arise and different than I would suggest different recommend different things. But uh, um, but yeah, I mean, a, a, a lot of times uh, the business will still be operating, but is that the best time to file bankruptcy? Uh, usually not, unless you're talking about a reorganization bankruptcy, okay? I mean, most of this conversation is going to be geared towards a personal Chapter 7 bankruptcy or a Chapter 7 bankruptcy for the business, meaning that, you know, it's not going to be able to keep going. OK. And so uh, when I get these calls um, in, in the consideration is, you know, hey, do I just close the door and walk away? Well, sometimes. But but they often wonder, you know, what can I take from the business? What can I leave? What's secured? What's not secured? And so, um, you know, really having an attorney to guide you through that process is not super expensive and, and, and it'll uh, really it'll alleviate a lot of headaches later. Um, and, and really, quite frankly, with the creditors as well. Um, if your business is thrown into a bankruptcy, when you know that the doors are going to be closed and you're just going to be liquidating the business anyway, then oftentimes it's better to, to get in touch with the creditors early on, um, both yourself as the business owner and me as your attorney, uh, to just facilitate an easy process where, you know, okay, well, hey, Mr. Landlord, Mrs. Landlord, get in touch with the the lender, the secured stuff's in there. And, and, and then if later it's needed to file a bankruptcy, we can do that. Uh, you know, the bankruptcy is a way to kind of mop up the mess, if you will, to make sure the business owner can move on with their life. And you, you touched on this a little bit already, but we we'll talk about some of the other options a small business owner has when he or she is closing down their business because they can't pay their debt. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, again, you know, talking to an attorney right away, we prioritize what should be paid. If you have an employee, obviously, I think everybody knows that's top priority. If you have uh, payroll taxes that you've withheld from some someone's check, uh, obviously that's top of the list there. Uh, so anything that that we, we look at right away will be to determine, you know, what debt that we know has to be paid in full regardless. And let's make sure we have resources to do that first. Um, other options uh, include, you know, working out agreements with the creditor. And it doesn't have to be an agreement that happens immediately when you close the doors. Um, you know, if, if the, again, if the business is bringing in income and you're maybe not paying the rent or you're not paying that huge loan payment, well, then, you know, you, you, you've got income and you can use that to maybe pay some of your payroll taxes or other things that have to be paid. And then later on, if a bankruptcy is not the best solution for the business owner because they have assets that aren't exempt, then we'd talk about, you know, what asset can be sold to potentially settle this business debt. You know, it's always about how best can the business owner move forward so uh, the, the horrible result of closing a business doesn't have to just be something that completely ruins them. Well, that's a great answer there. And if the business is a sole proprietorship as opposed to an LSC or, or a corporation, does that change the options that the owner has? 
Not really. No, it, it kind of, it, it, no, it can affect what I would recommend that person to do. Uh, but no, it doesn't. And, and, and since you brought that up, I mean, oftentimes if you've got an LLC or S Corp would be the two forms of closely held businesses. And by the way, this, we're mainly talking about small businesses, obviously it could be just yourself, could be husband and wife, could be, you know, business owner, business partner, uh, either way, uh, closely held business is, is mainly what we're talking about here. Uh, and, and so, you know, as we go into that situation, uh, maybe the business owner says, well, wait a minute, I've got these clients here. I just, I've just got to get rid of this big loan. And, and I can essentially still do what I've been doing. If it's general contracting, if it's, you know, building pools or, uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, you can still, you want to keep going. You just, it didn't work out with, in, on, with this particular entity. And so the LLC versus the sole proprietorship, uh, that can make sense to actually start working as a sole proprietor as you slowly ditch the LLC uh, because that's what's attached to all the loan and debt. And you know, it's a tightrope for sure. I mean, you know, like letting go, go a business and then starting another business, you know, you don't want to be like you're just carrying on the same business. So it is a tightrope, but it's a tightrope that we often walk. And I often uh, uh, will advise my clients on how to do that. And so sole proprietorship versus LLC when you own a share of a company, then your ownership are, are the shares and then the company owns everything else. But if it's a sole proprietorship, then you as the business owner, you own everything. It's you that owns it. You, you're, you're the business, you own the business property. And so th that can play into, uh, you know, when you exempt tools of the trade, for example, in Texas, you can exempt like $25,000 ish or so to just, you know, business tools of the trade. And that can include a truck. Uh, and so a lot of times the, they can just keep operating with, you know, with the tools of the trade and then maybe open up an LLC and start doing something same or similar uh, just slowly as they ditch the other debt. And so that's that's something we discuss all options. And, and so the, what, whether you have an LLC, and you want to open another one, whether you're a sole proprietor and then I then recommend to open an LLC either way. I mean, it, it just, you know, it might change the technicalities of it, but the result will basically be the same. And what's interesting about what you're saying here is that bankruptcy is not the only way to get rid of your debts here. Oh, certainly not. No, it, it's, it's not. And it's just that the, my clients can't pay the creditors on their terms. Okay. You know, they're, they're wanting too much too fast. And so when you cut off the creditors, you know, it's not like in most cases, you're going to get a lawsuit at your door right away. Some of them will. Okay. There's aggressive ones, but most of the time it just buys a little buffer zone of time where the attorney can then reach out to the bank and the creditors and, and provide some financial information uh, and, and just determine, you know, what can be done to settle this debt. Right. Uh, you know, they can't pay at all. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but they do have this asset over here. And, and let's talk about, you know, how much you can take Mr. Creditor, or Mrs. Creditor to get paid. And, and so this person can move on with their life. And you were just talking about the assets. Walk us through what happens to the assets of a business that's closing either through bankruptcy or through some other other way. Yeah, good question. It depends what the assets are, obviously. But uh, if it's, uh, you know, so and, and that if you have where the debt's coming in and you know you can't keep it going, well, you know, that's why you see it's going out of business sales, right? They want to get at rid of the inventory um, and, and, you know, or if you want to finish this last job that you're working on, okay? Uh, and so if you have equipment after that that is not tied to a loan, then you can exempt that as a tool of the trade if you're still going to be using those uh, tools or whatever. The, and again, it could be a car, whatever, if it's some sort of tool using business, you can exempt that stuff and keep it. Uh, but right away, we determine, you know, what's secured, what's not secured. If there's a large business loan, then usually, you know, the equipment that you have uh, will be secured. Okay. If you have, you know, printing equipment or some, uh, but uh, so what happens to the stuff? You know, we walk through that analysis just to say, you know, Hey, well, What's paid for? What's in your name? What can we keep? What's in the business's name? What's secured? What's not? Oh, you're going to have to give all that stuff up. Okay. And, and, you know, just go through that analysis to determine what can be kept and what can't. Well, David, a lot of great information as always. I really appreciate you joining us and sharing your expertise with us. Yeah. Glad to be here. Thanks. I enjoyed it too. All right. And that's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been David Schuster. If you want to ask David a question about your situation, call the number you see on your screen. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Mustin for Ask the Lawyers.